Hi, welcome to this new devlog series. I'll be showing the whole process as I build a game from start to finish. It's a very different concept to Lumber Mill, and from the start of this project I have exactly 26 weeks to finish it. You all need to hold me to that or I don't get a degree. The theme for this is actually my final year dissertation title, Cybersecurity Awareness Gamification. That basically means taking cybersecurity and turning it into a game which is actually fun while slyly teaching the player some stuff. Based on the core ideas of tower defence games such as Kingdom Rush, Bloons and of course the original tower defence, the player must defend a network against a series of cyber attacks. They do that by building turrets called controls, which have their own strengths and weaknesses. Each control has its own set of parameters which the player has reign over, affecting the way they behave. That's the basic idea, we'll cover the rest as I go. Obviously, the place to start was creating the Unity project. That's always an exciting first step. I think it's cool that all games start here, as an empty project in some way. I gave it a working title and got to work building out the basics of the main game interface from the mockups. The layout consists of a bar at the top of the screen displaying some statistics, a button to start simulating attacks and a back button. At the bottom of the screen, there's a collapsible panel containing all of the different controls the player can choose from. These will range from firewalls to password protection and a load more. With the basic layout planned out, I started making the basic nodes that make up the level. These are circles with an icon in the middle, connected with lines. The colour of the icon will dictate things like the level of access for that node, or whether it's friendly or hostile. The connection is just a unity line renderer with start and end points at a pair of nodes. The connections will be coloured in a gradient from the start to the end, so if a blue node is connected to red, it will gradually turn from blue to red. Each node has a collider on it, which will allow me to click and drag nodes for building levels, and for the player to add controls to the level when they're playing. This whole interface will be dual purpose, working as both the level builder and the level area, so that should save me some time. In order for that clicking and dragging to work, I had to enable mouse events for triggers, otherwise Unity would just ignore them. And after adding the dragging code to the nodes themselves, I got the clicking and dragging functionality working. But you'll notice that the connection isn't staying connected, which would probably be helpful, so I did that next. First, the connections needed a script for themselves, and that was pretty simple to write. The nodes just tell the connection to update its start and end points whenever they move. To make sure the gradient is always calculated correctly, I then added a colour variable to the nodes themselves so the game always knows what colour should be where, and this was the result. Next, in order to delete connections or make new connections, the connections themselves needed some kind of collision detection. Using the line renderer's built-in bake mesh function, I generated a mesh for collisions whenever the line changed shape. That was creating a box at first, which was a little confusing until switching to 3D mode, I noticed flipping the convex switch on the collider created a perfect outline. The fact I switched to 3D mode should have indicated to me that maybe I wasn't using the right collider for the job, but that's something I discovered in week two. I then felt super proud of myself making a way to vary the width of the collider, which you can see here. Anyway, I wasn't using the collider at that point, so I moved on. I added a bunch of nodes to the scene and made connections between them to test everything was working correctly, and as you can see, it all did. The gradients are calculated, the nodes can be moved around and the connections move with the nodes. So it was time to take a break for the evening. Took a walk around town, had a hot chocolate as I don't drink coffee, and chilled out for a bit. It seems to be a theme amongst devlog YouTubers to have a little walk mid-video, but there is a reason we all swear by it. Of course, it really helps to take breaks when you're so busy making stuff. The next morning, I got up at 8 to a rainy morning, had an hour-long lecture, and got back to work on the game. I wanted to make the menu at the bottom of the screen functional, so firstly I added an animator to it so it could move up and down on demand. 
Next, I started making the actual option template the player will choose from. It shows the control's name, cost, and icon. After making a couple of test controls, it looked like this, with everything populating correctly and the menu opening and closing on demand. Based on the mockups, the game then needed a window that pops up whenever the player hovers over the information icon on each option. This will explain what each control does, hopefully teaching the player a bit about different cybersecurity techniques. The description for each control is read from a plain text file, which will make it super easy for me to write them in the future. I added the test description I wrote to the menu and fired the game up to test that. It all looks right, and the window will fade in or out whenever the player hovers their mouse over the information icon. In order to get the drag and drop functionality to work, I added a collider to the options so that when the player clicks and drags from the icon, a control is automatically created and attached to the mouse. That looked like this once I'd set it all up. Right, well that was week one. I'm pretty happy with what was done, as of course I'm also making lumber mill at the same time, and obviously university work has been a priority. I can't say how often these videos will be released yet, but they'll likely be on Fridays between Lumbermill devlogs. If you want to follow either project more closely, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description. Of course, if you like the video, definitely subscribe as I make lots of content like this. That's all for this video. Cheers for watching.